this video I'm going to show you how to snipe without using um, without using software so in other words without using Zeek Analytics so and in this video also I'll show you how to find different sellers as well so firstly before we go into this um, just to give you an idea how to identify dropshippers is to look at the feedback um, look at their negative and neutral feedback so if we select this person's negative didn't deliver um, so essentially what we're looking for is anything that says the buyer got it from somewhere else or they found that but I can tell this seller's um, uh, dropshipper just because look, items supplied by Amazon third party seller people aren't happy about that broke GDPR by passing details into Amazon blah 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 it is, again buy this item from Amazon this is why you shouldn't drop ship from Amazon people get frustrated when they get an Amazon box and you're gonna ruin your eBay metrics so um, although this person is still pretty good 99.2 it's just there's too many dropship too many retailers that you can use for this um, online off charge so items to sell 818 so if I select that um, it will take me to all their pages and it's already pre-sorted by best match and you want to leave it as this so depending on your strategy but the strategy that I teach is to look for anything over 25 pounds I did start off at 20 pounds I know some dropshippers that use 40 pounds but 25 pounds works fine and you're more likely to ensure that you have good profit margins so if you select that 398 results so um, and you would filter for bite now but this person doesn't have auction so you don't need to do that and yeah so what you can do so I'm gonna just show you everything even if the seller is not a good seller I'm gonna show you all the things that I do want when I am sniping manually um, but it is a process and it doesn't take more time but again if you don't if you're not sure about drop shipping that kind of thing I'd suggest doing this before until you make cash flow and as soon as you can invest in Zeke Analytics as soon as you in fact as soon as you make um, the twenty twenty nine dollars um I believe that's the price I'd, I'd say invest your first thirty dollars in in Z analytics because it'll just make working so much faster and um, it'll be more productive for your time so the whole idea is so we've got three hundred and ninety eight results and we're not going to look at all three hundred and ninety eight results that just won't be good for our time it's not worth doing that unless the seller was magnificent and even then it's it's just it, it just becomes mundane and boring. Um, so the method I teach is this first page of eBay will show you 50 so we want to go down the first page of a seller's um, best matches essentially um, don't get me wrong if you go to let's go, let's go to the bottom there may well be um, amazing products on page three and four but it's just not worth our time to go through that process so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up anything that has traction and by that I just mean any um, eBay displays metrics such as two watches only one left only one left means it has sold before not it doesn't necessarily tell you how many times so anything that has more than five watches or has more than five sales that's a general rule of thumb so and if it has both of course even better but that's that's a general rule of thumb so let's just scroll down two watches no only one left again this could have sold 10 times 20 times but eBay is not telling us how many times it sold so it's not it's not worth our time to to have a look to in every every product that eBay because eBay doesn't always tell you so it's not worth our time to have a look at every single one so seven watches this has traction let's open it up nine watches has traction five eight watches 16 sold so this told us how many times it's sold um, uh, we have a coca-cola bin nope okay and I'm just gonna stop here for now um, just to check the products that we have just to see so again so this is sold five times it didn't tell us this when we were looking it just told us how many watches but it sold five times when is it sold? So for reference, the day today is the 25th of February 2020. So this sold four times in January, which is pretty good, and it sold once so far in February. 
So generally with sniping, of course, we look for products that are sold at least three times in the last 30 days. However, we do list things if it's sold twice or if it has a good amount of watches and maybe has one sale. If it has momentum or it looks like it has the ability to sell again, then it's something that you should list. So a lot of a lot of dropshippers say four sales in the last 30 days and they're dead strict on it. You can run your store like that if you want, but I suggest looking for anything. So this is sold it sold three times in January, it sold once in February. It it sure does look like it can sell again. Like if you ask me. So that's the question you should ask yourself. Does this look like it could sell again? If this was um, November 2019 and in a, and a, a sale in December, it's been far too long, it's not worth it. But this has sold in the last couple of weeks and before that it sold many times in a month before. So it's something that I'd still consider listing. And that's the best way I can explain that, guys. So there's no general rule of thumb. Yes, when you're using Zeek, filter for free sales, then you can look for things to sales. Um, but if it looks like it could sell again, it's worth listing. And you get better at sort of identifying those opportunities the more you do it. So, but yeah. So again, so this is something that we'd list. We've established that. Why? Because it looks like it can sell again. But first, we want to see how much it is. Sorry, we want to see um, if there are other competitors on it. And to do that, simply copy the title and paste it in the eBay search bar. And we found six results. So six results. One, two, three, four. And in doing so, we've also found five more dropshippers so you can add these dropshippers to your um to your sellers list is is that easy to find um i'd advise not to add anyone over ten thousand because they're just hard to compete with i'm just going to add this seller for this demonstration so copy their name from here command c and i'll just paste it in my um in, in my sellers list. So title this sellers list, always have a sellers list. And the reason that I copied it from this section, just to explain that, is because then it allows you, when you paste it into your Excel, your sheets, it allows you to click that and it takes you directly to their, to their store, um, which is amazing. So what you want to do here is you want to find the cheapest price. So who's the cheapest? BJ Industries, $31.99. And The most established seller as well. I've been the most established seller. So, yeah, in fact, I'm not even going to do that. So, let's find where they get the product from. Okay. So, the way to find where a product is from is to go to the description of the product and right click partner text and press search. Some, some sellers do hide it. For example, we have this seller here. Um, he has hidden his product description, but it doesn't matter because there are other people selling the product as well. For example, everything for sale. He's probably going to have a product description. Not really, he doesn't. So let's just try copying this in to see if we can find where it's from. It looks like it could be an Amazon product. Um, yes, it is indeed. 2576. Again, I do stay away from Amazon products. Why? Um, let me say you can drop ship with Amazon, but the reason that I stay away from them is from my own experience. So if you want to use Amazon, it's up to you. But I have found that you're more likely to get Vero warnings with Amazon products. And on top of that, if you place too many orders with Amazon, eventually they might just start playing around your account, locking your account because you're sending to all these different addresses. Uh, so that's what they did to me and it, it caused me a lot of headaches. So with Amazon now, I only need less from them if the profit is over £10. Um, the profit of this, of course, is not over £10. Um, so the cheapest is £31.99. So, um, the cheapest listing is £31.99. And the profit is £25.76. So there's a little bit of profit in that. Um, to see how much, £25.76. Let's use the final fee calculator. £25.76. £25.76. And the cheapest person selling the product under that title. Basic shop. Yes. So you get about £2.44 profit from that. Um, it's better than nothing. I'd, I'd list this. Um, I wouldn't list this because I don't list from Amazon, but this is, it's got more than £2 profit. It ticks all the boxes. So, yeah. 
Okay. Let's put this on the side. Okay. Four sold. Let's have a look. Again, it sold four times in January. It hasn't sold in February. Has it got competition? How much competition there is should also determine whether you should list something. So this has no competition, nine watches. Sold four times in January. It could potentially sell again. It, again, it's something that you could list. If it hasn't sold in 30 days, 60 days, delete it. Um, is this another Amazon product? I'm going to try and avoid Amazon products. Um, again, yeah, this, this does look like it is an Amazon product. Another way to find where something might be from is to search for images. So with something like this, this won't work because you can tell this person has used Canva, added a border, added um, images to the picture. So if you search this in Google, if you right click, you right click in this search for Google, nothing will come up because this person has edited the picture. I'll just to show you an example. Again, we click the picture. Yeah, again. So it's just taking us to their pitch, to their to their eBay listing here. Um, it's not helping, but people do not have the time to edit all their pictures. So simply just go to the second picture, right click, search Google for image. Google will do its work, and then you can see if you can find where you get it from. So click this image. eBay, Amazon, Amazon, Etsy, Amazon. I could I could just tell it's an Amazon product. So again, I'm gonna swiftly move on from this. This is sold twice. When is it sold? No, I'm not going to list this. It's, it hasn't sold enough. Again, this is sold twice. Nope, it's not selling regularly enough. 16 sold. Um, this is not really selling well. Hasn't sold in a while. But it is something that you could list. It's just something that I'm not going to look into. So this is sold nine times. When is it sold? Again, it's the 22nd of February. It's sold twice in the month of February. And six times, six, seven times in the month of January. This is definitely something worth looking into. Competition first. And again, let me say, when you're looking at competition, you want to ensure that this number is less than 10. We want less than 10 results because if it's less than 10, it essentially means um, um, there's less competition. If there's too much, if you, you find that on products where there's more than 10, um, you'll find that the profit is pretty much driven down to, to nothing and people are struggling for scraps. So it is possible to find dropship items with less than 10. It just takes more work. And on top of that, you're less likely to be put on people's sellers lists because look, I could add all these sellers as I find here on my sellers list. Um, top tip when adding sellers to your sellers list, you should look out for sellers on products that were a good find or that ticked all your boxes um, more than three sellers in the last 30 days. Then you should um, look at the competitors on that, whatever competitors are on there. Those are probably good sellers because they found a good product as well. So. If you if you're happy if you find a very a very good sniped product, see see what competitors are under their listings because if you found them, the people that found them also are probably pretty good. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it has less than ten results. Great. Who's the cheapest price? I'm, I can see twenty four eighty, twenty two eighty. With something like this, you can just tell if someone's selling at twenty eight eighty and someone's selling at twenty two eighty. You can just tell that this person is just destroyed the competition um, and that happens over time the more competitors so something like this will I even check no I'm not gonna check um, I'm gonna add this person to the sellers list as well so yeah any sellers you see here feel free to take them um, okay so again continue scrolling down so this this seller looks like he uses a lot of Like he uses a lot of um, so again. I'm just opening up everything with traction, anything with good metrics. Five watches, great, 12 sold, great, 11 sold. Let's open that up, and five, six watches. Keep going. Sometimes you won't find anything from a seller, but sometimes you will. 
and it's really just a numbers game you have to take your time with this sniping is not easy it's time consuming it's mundane and um, it's monotonous but um, you are looking we are looking for evidence of sales we are looking for things that have a higher likelihood of selling um, so again you just keep going so I'm actually gonna go to the end so anything attraction nope I'm not gonna open those up so then I can close this page now I just work page by page four sold sold twice in February twice in January um, let's have a look at the competition 67 12 pence no competition great has five watches good sign this is taking a lot of boxes product description right click search in Google 49.99 at Smith's this is definitely something that you could list definitely so it's 49.99 at Smith's and 67 pound to open so let's just check that final fee calculator it's 49.99 Smith doesn't charge shipping Oops, 67 pound 12 pence, 67 pound 12 pence. Let's assume you have a basic shop. So he's making some pretty good profit. So you've got 9 pound 51 in that product. So this is definitely something that I'd list. Um, so what I'd do is I'd copy I'd copy the supplier page, items to list, do that. Do that. So I'll copy the supplier page, Smith's. And then I, I wouldn't copy the product page and I'll tell you why. The reason I wouldn't copy the product page is that you can't see if any there are that someone else has sniped this person. So I always suggest and I tell my viewers to copy the title and pay, copy and paste the title into the description and copy this page because that way the next time you click the link, if there has been a new um, competitor or a new listing, it will show up here and it will show up with their price and you can then undercut them. So, But I definitely suggest working like this, as in sourcing products first and then listing later. So spend some time sourcing, spend some time listing. Um, so that's found, found one product, great. Um, okay, so we got this, 12 sold, when is it sold? So remember, when we're opening up these products that have traction, we're not opening them up because we're listing them. We're opening up them to see if it, the criteria is good enough for us to list it. So this sold like hotcakes throughout January, but hasn't sold in February. Why is that? It might be because of competition. Let's have a look. So there's eight results. Again, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, who's the cheapest? 36.49 is the cheapest I can see so far. 34.85 and he's top. So let's click his listing. And copy part of the description, search in Google. Zoo plus at 28.99. He's selling it for 34.85. 34.85. And as in Z plus at 28.99 roughly yeah so this is something that we could list it hasn't got great profit but it's still something that we can list it's got less than 10 results we don't want anything too saturated um, so again let's simply just copy this paste it so yeah and those competitors that we found like I'd say only add sellers to the sellers list of products that are successful of listing. So for example, we decided that this was going to go on our store, it was good enough. So any sellers under this listing, I don't think there's any competition on this one, but you understand the general notion. If there were sellers here, these are the sellers that I'd add to the sellers list. Not not just random because there's too many sellers who are not good. Um, so we need to and we want to ensure that we have quality sellers on our sellers list. Okay. Again, so this is sold 11 times, um, and this is something that's doing very well. It's, set, it's sold in January many times, and it's still selling in February. Definitely can sell again. What's the competition like? Four results, that's amazing. Um, who's the cheapest? We have the cheapest here at 31.36. Um, again, this is something let's let's have a look to see if it's um, so it's 
copy description right click search in Google this is an Amazon product $24.99 $24.99 so there's probably going to be a bit of profit in there again I avoid Amazon listings but it's up to you it's at your own discretion if you want to list that as you can see it's profitable um, this is just estimated profit um, but yeah this is something that's profitable again you can just copy that and this is what I was speaking about earlier so we found that this is an okay product to list on our store if you want to use Amazon so these sellers who are here these are worth these sellers are worth adding to our list because they found successful products we want um, people with successful products okay so close that and yeah so that's the that's the process that I use so to check to see if something is worth listing so we just carry down carry on with all those listings to see and you just keep going and keep filling up the page and eventually you get quicker you get smarter you find more effective ways of doing it, doing things. Um, and another thing I want to show you as well is um, so if you go on the items for sale, uh, let's just filter for over 27. So the pre sort is best match, but you can have a look at their newly listed products here. Let's just close these tabs. Um, so the date is the 22nd of February this person this seller hasn't listed since the 5th of February um, so you can tell they're not too active on their store however um, this can be used as a strategy sometimes if you have a look at what sellers are newly listing um, they're, and, and their snipes you can get in early of, of good snipe listing so I snipe new listings all the time especially when I know they're snipers because I know their new listings are going to be snipe listings so you can kind of just steal their listings so I definitely recommend this so let's have a look so if I click this if you want to see whether it's a snipe listing just copy the title paste it in the search bar and it is a snipe listing see so again more sellers here if, if you like but then we'll see if that's possible to um, if that's a good list I can't see any metrics here, so I don't even know if it would be a good list. But if you can see metrics, and if there are other sellers on the product, it's usually an indicator that it is profitable and it is something that's selling. Otherwise, people, oh, I hope at least people just randomly list something that is never sold. But yeah, so that's that's an idea. So let's close that. And another thing you could do is you can filter for their sold listings by clicking this. So this will show you what has sold. So this sold. Um, today is the 25th so they sold yesterday the day before and then you can also scroll down these listings as well to see is it the first time is it sold is it is it you know have a look and then you can open them and see whether you can list it as well so yeah and um, that's that's it for this video so that's showed you how you can snipe without using software you snipe using Zeek Analytics, so using software. So Zeek Analytics is what I recommend. I believe the basic, the basic, all you need is the basic setup, which is I believe as of date twenty nine ninety nine, so twenty nine dollars. Um, so yeah, and essentially you can play around, have a look at the settings and things like that. Um, but really, the main sort of tab we're going to be focusing on is this one, um, the one with the inspector or detective. Simply select that. Then it'll take you search for a competitor, username or competitor ID. And all you do is simply copy the seller's name from your seller's list into Zeek. Press search. And it will show you their statistics. So it'll show sorry, it'll show you their sort of metrics. So their sell through rate, how many active listings they have, how many sold items, their revenue in the last 30 days. So here you can change um what time period you want so the default is 30 days um, their average selling price how many successful listings successful listings are essentially listings that have sold um, and it also shows their feedback score so yeah so at the moment it's showing their best match so what you can do with Zeke is that you can filter for sales which is great um, so that's that's what we're going to be filtering for so 30 day sales we're filtering for 
not overall sales because something could have sold 20 times but its last sale could be last year so we're not interested in that so we want to look at sales in the last 30 days so as per the strategy sniping free sales in the last 30 days and I'll select filter oops I forgot apologies uh, a minimum of 25 pounds or 25 dollars um, and filter then it will show you all the successful listings um, that satisfy that criteria so for this for this um, supplier there's only one um, but the more sellers you have you'll find sellers ha who have plenty who have loads and yeah if something sold more than three sales in the last 30 days it's worth looking into um, eventually over time you start to you know get an inkling for what might potentially be an Amazon product and then you can sort of know what to avoid or what not to open same for Vera items if that's the strategy that you if you don't want to list Vera items a lot of other sellers do list Vera items but if that's not a risk you want to take on your store then don't and over time you'll be able to sort of identify you no know, fish price is Vero uh, or um, Russell Hobbs is Vero and you sort of to understand and you're just able to work quicker and it's the same with your VAs so my VA sometimes knows um, what's um, what's on a Vero list and what might potentially be an Amazon product and therefore you can save time so simply of course unfortunately this is not the best example but again it's the strategy that I'm teaching you guys so there's only one successful listing where this number can change you simply click that listing and the beauty is you don't have to click this because we know know it's sold at least three times in 30 days so let's see if there's any competitors copy the title okay so there's seven results and I just want to show you another thing so to search for competitors you can actually click this which is scan title but I don't like to do this because I actually think it's slower um, so it will just show you Zeek Analytics can sort of, sort of search for the competitors but it as you can see there's not much difference than just typing in the eBay search bar but it does give you all their prices so I can see some of the cheapest person selling it for $17.99 and I'll probably see the same thing on eBay yeah right here $17.99 so he's probably cut out all the um, again these are additional sellers you can put on your sellers list um, he's probably cut out all the profit so I don't imagine this would be profitable anymore um, so I'm not even gonna check with this one but of course if I wanted to check simply go to the description um, copy part of the description, right click search in Google alternatively you can right click the image and search Google for the image um, and yeah and then I'll see if it's profitable either using hustle got real, using the final fee calculator or using one of the spreadsheets so yeah so and then okay so one thing I like to do so if I just go back to let's just close this tab, close this tab so another thing that I like to do is I like to filter for two sales as well um, so anything that's sold twice so the good thing that you can do with um, hustle got blah, 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 not hustle got real the good thing that you can do with Zeek Analytics is so the reason I filter for two sales is because you can get an inclination of something that's just sold twice if something's sold twice in the past 30 days it's not bad but comparing it with the total sold so this is sold twice in the past 30 days but it's also sold 17 times so this probably sells twice a month so this is probably something that we can consider listing as, as well um, this um, if there is a green circle it means you can um, it's on Amazon and you can see it straight away but I know Zoo Plus um, a pet supply in the UK also sell this product so I'd open this up all these up I'd open all these up and I see if it's something that I could list um, so two sales is something that I look for something like this maybe not so much but this has had two sales in the last 80 days but it's sold five times it's selling it's it's not a bad product especially so something like this is definitely something I'd look at and even when I do use software some people just exclusively rely on the software so they do this with every single seller and move on but I like to get the best out of every seller so sometimes I still click their store so obviously using using Zeek Analytics does save me time in terms of their sales but I still do click their store sometimes um, and I train my VAs to do so just to you know just have to have a look still filter and, and really just maximize 
the seller that you're sniping and efficiently work through them. So I would still maybe have a look at some of the watches, you know, um, see that didn't pop up. So this is sold four times. Let's have a look. Okay, I probably wouldn't snap. It's sold once. It's got 20 watches. Oh, sorry, once that we can see. So it's probably not selling well. But I would have a look, quick look to see if there's anything else. And again, that's another thing. Um, Z Analytics won't show you the new listings. Um, I've showed you why this is beneficial. So a seller like this, we already know that this seller, first of all, his last listing was the 2nd of August. Again, it is the February the 27th. So it's February 2020. So it's it's he hasn't listed in a while so you don't even bother going down this because even if it has sold he doesn't list so move on on to the next seller so yeah that's pretty much it so just to summarize uh, filter for three sales in the last 30 days after you've done that filter for two sales and then it's optional to just check out the um, the seller store just to see if there's any sort of items that seemingly have good metrics for you to also check out so yeah that's that's all there is to it sniping it does take some time to find quality products but that's the general um, method um, general method um, that we use and that we've seen successful results with